What's up everybody? Tim Anderson here, aka Renfail. Welcome to the channel, if you're new. I'm here today to talk about tabletop world building, which is an interesting it's an interesting way that I got here to this conversation because even though I, I do tabletop development and I'm involved in tabletop, my channel here has largely not been about tabletop. It's mostly been gaming and reviews and pop culture and television shows and books and conversations about Rings of Power and Mondays in Middle Earth and, and then talking about tabletop news and stuff. But all of our game dev stuff is kept separate on its own YouTube channel with our own other Patreon and everything else. Um, so there is an occasional bleed over here, but not a lot. And recently I was digging into this tool that, that we have on YouTube um, as creators, which is the research tool. And that gives us topics that we could potentially cover that our audiences are searching for or interested in on YouTube. And I was scrolling through the other day for pure curiosity because I've never done this before. And it there's two phrases that popped out that people are searching for um, within my user base, which is tabletop, which is of course, because of the conversations that are going on because of the OGL and world building. And I went, well, I've actually never talked about that on this channel. Not for a long time, actually. Um, I could make a video about that and we'll see what happens with the algorithm. Is the algorithm going to pick up on it or not? So it's a, this is an experiment video. So if you're here because of the algorithm, that means it's working. It also means you need to like, subscribe and hit that bell icon so you never miss an update as we continue to do all sorts of fun stuff here on YouTube and also at our other place. Um, so today I'm going to be talking about tabletop world building. My experiences in the space, which might be different from other people's experiences in that space, um, what I'm working on with my brother and my wife, how we got to where we are today, um, all the things we've seen along our journey, which may be applicable to other people on their journey. Your experience might be completely different. You might have something you can add to this conversation. Um, that's all this is at the end of the day is a conversation. So if you find all of that useful, hopefully you'll join us. Don't forget to support with super chats and stickers on live streams and premieres. Super thanks on the uploaded video after the fact. Memberships, which start at $3 a month down below. And of course our Patreon page, which we will promote throughout this video. So uh, yeah, there will be commercial content as well as artistic content. Just fair warning. So we launched our most recent product in May of 2022, which is the source book for the World of the Weave and the Void. Now, that also includes not only the source book, but the prequel adventure, as we call it, which is a level one to level four um adventure that starts in the capital city at the time um, and you run through that and uh, eventually end up around level four escape the city and then you get into the first campaign um, and go from there simultaneous to everything that's going on with our uh, tabletop campaign and settings is the novel series the book series which is being published in a serialized format over at our patreon page so we're up to 31 chapters now um, and we're going to be wrapping up the first novel around march of this year at which point i will then take all of the written chapters put them all together give it some edit passes and polish passes get it to our alpha and beta readers and then eventually get that published on amazon in hardback and print for print on demand uh, for our users and then around that as well, we have a point-and-click adventure game, which is set in the same world. Um, and we've been at this uh, since we officially started in March of 2021. Um, through Patreon, we have produced in the ballpark of, I'm going to go look at it right now, it's in the ballpark of 200, I think, posts. It is 185 posts um, documenting our journey on Patreon ever since we started from napkin sketches to where we are today. Um, we've documented that journey and also I would argue probably in the thousands now of social media posts documenting that journey along the way. Um, we've, we've shown all of the documentation for all parts of the project over there. Plus we live streamed the uh, prequel campaign over on our other channel and we live streamed the first story arc from season one leading up to the end of 2022. Now that we're into 2023, we're in the process of the next stage. So the next stage is the launch of the point and click adventure game and the publication of the first novel in official book format. Because up to this date, it's, you know, it's always been done every, every month we get two chapters um, leading up to where we are now. Um, 
and then of course um, what we've got going on with the tabletop itself and the campaign mirrors the events in the book and vice versa in that we also have characters from the book who show up in the tabletop campaign and vice versa and also they have easter egg appearances in the point and click adventure game so all of this ties into each other all three of these are going into the same space in terms of the setting and the world that sounds like a lot of information but you need all of that background information to understand how this all started out so um, at the end of 2020 my brother and i were coming out of another project where we had worked on a, an mmrpg for seven plus years um I was the uh, founder of that company and the CEO and the creative director of the project. And my brother was on board as one of the founders and uh, designers. And at the end of that, we were just ready for something different. And we decided that we were going to do a point and click adventure game and instead of worrying about 20 plus team members and needing all the money and the investors and the pitching and managing people's egos and personalities and everything else. Um, we looked at a point and click game as being the next most approachable project because we could do it the, the two of us. Um, so we decided that was what it could be. That's what we're going to do. But we needed a world for the point and click. So that got us spinning. And this is late 2020, early 2021. And we said, well, if we need a setting for it, why don't we just do like what they did with Dragonlance? Because I've always been a fan of what Tracy Hickman and his wife did where they built this entire world and then published the adventures. So they had the setting and then published campaign adventures and adventure packs in that setting and then got to novels and then got to adventure games. And my brother and I kind of sat down and went, well, why don't, if you work on the bulk of the game development in Unreal, um, I can handle all the writing duties. So I can write all of the dialogue the description texts narration and everything else everything for the point and click game while simultaneously creating the setting that we're going to use for this thing um, and then i can also write these chapters of the book and tie it all together and so once we knew that that's how we kind of wanted to do it my brother and i made a commitment to publicly documenting the process um, now when we first started it did not have the name the weave in the void um it had a placeholder name called project dramond and if you dig around on my youtube channel you will find a project dramond playlist somewhere here on my personal channel which has somewhere around 100 videos that we put up documenting the process throughout the early parts of 2021 leading up to the point where we branded as the weave in the void um and um, also branded our company, Wandering Hermits LLC. So there was like eight months of documentation where everything was being done on Patreon and through my personal YouTube channel here under the, that code name is Project Dramond. And we live streamed and published videos for all of our brainstorming sessions. So, we, so anybody who wants to dig into this, that content is freely available here on my YouTube channel. Uh, you can go over to the Patreon page for more information. But the videos themselves, all the brainstorming videos, where my brother and I will sit down for like two hours or whatever, hour and a half, two hours, and we just talk about what do we want the story to be? Um, what about this, that, or the other? What, what do we want to have for races? What do we want to have for classes? How do we want the storyline of the book series to work versus how do we want the, the storyline of the point and click to work? How's the storyline for the point – for the um, the the – tabletop game going to work what's the campaign going to look like how's that all going to tie together we documented all of that publicly and left that up there as like a boot print a foot trail you know as it were of how we did it and when we first started the project the very first thing we did was we established sort of the idea for the story from a setting perspective, it didn't matter what this looked like. The world didn't matter. Um, the map doesn't matter. What mattered was the the story and what was going into it. So we came up with this idea because of it was partially inspired by all the COVID stuff. It was like, what if we took a fantasy environment and we put it into the middle of a of a quarantine and in, in the middle of a of a um, pandemic situation. 
And our original brainstorming things were like talking about how maybe maybe it had already happened and like the southern section of the, the world had already been like wiped out. And that's why we had human refugees in the land of the Fae. And then that changed into, no, 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 let's make it be post-apocalyptic humanity. So they've already torched their earth and scorched it with technology. And they had to flee their lands and they found the realm of the Fae, which is the land of magic. And they brought their technology with them. So we've got quantum technology from the humans, but we've got elemental magic from the Fae. And it doesn't mix that well and the evolution of that combination over time leads to this mutation which creates this illness that no one knows how to cure which creates this infection that changes these people into these I mean, the, the nearest likeness would be zombies, but they're not zombies. But it's kind of like looking at the way The Last of Us did it with the, the fungi. Something happens which converts these people into creatures that are other than human. And then it becomes this thing where, you know, everyone's panicked about getting infected. And so there's a pandemic situation. But then we also have all these political issues going on with, well, who, who, who created this? Where did it come from? And you've got humans against elves and elves against humans. So there's racism going on and there's the pandemic going on and there's technology with magic. And it's not science fiction though. It's, it's definitely a fantastical world. And so we coming to all of that was just us sitting down with napkin sketches and notes that we would take and we would just sit down and we would hash out those details between the two of us like a writer's room and just say what do you think about this idea well, what if we did this instead and we spin it off of that and so we did that for several months until we came up with the core story of what we wanted to happen with the main the main book series the main point and click adventure game and the main campaign for season one of the point there the the tabletop experience so once we had that in place i then could set about creating the world map now the world map is important in terms of the world building but it's not in my opinion it's not as important as the story now once i've got the story in place i can go through and say okay we need it we need a capital city for the humans where everything could kick off where this where this plague starts. So we need a capital city. And because we already know these things from the story, I can put the elves and the humans together in that city and then work backwards, knowing that down south there was this big event. And the easy, easy way to do this is you put a boundary at the southern edge of the map so that don't go beyond that. You know, beyond this, there be dragons sort of environment. So we have the Tarna Mountains at the southern end. I can actually move this map around um, for everybody to see a little bit better. I'm um, headed over here so that you guys can see the logo because, of course, this is a commercial video. Um, but we do have a pretty big world map here. Um, by the way, another thing that I did was um, I made all these maps in Incarnate, and I live streamed all of the map making of every map that I did for our tabletop source book and the first adventure module. So there's like, there's 24, 25 maps in there, like cavern maps and city maps and, and dungeon maps and, and street level maps and battleground maps. I did all the maps myself. I did them all in incarnate, um, putting this all together. Um, and, and anyway, this was the first map I did was the, was the world map. I live streamed all of the creation of this, but down south, you could, probably can't see it because the lettering is really tiny right here, but the furthest southern point on this map is the Tarna Mountains. And that's the boundary between the realm of the Fae and the realm of the humans. And the humans scorched their earth 500 years ago. So we know that that part of the map is blocked off. So when I was going about the creation of the world map, um, I said, well, we can immediately just lock that behind that southern border but also know that there is something down there that we can eventually go to if we need to for an expansion later on down the road. Now, we also know that over to the east is the Mad Sea, and the only people who can sail the Mad Sea are sea elves. That was something we'd established in our lore of the different versions of the elves. So we went, okay, we know that to the east there's something else beyond the Mad Sea, and we can't get to it yet because only the sea elves can, see, can, can, can sail there. So now we've got that edge of the world map locked off. Then to the north, we've got the icy region, which is normal for every fantasy world out there. And again, edge of the map. We can go there if we need to in a future expansion, but it doesn't need to matter. It's not important for now because for now the focus is here. And the first two campaigns at least are taking place entirely on this map because not only do you have to deal with 
this first season arc, which is dealing with the the plague and the turned and the racism, which eventually comes to a head when the this one group starts to do genocidal wiping out of all the fey across that we get into a, a military environment where we have to have a battle to determine the fate of people um and then once that happens if we get everybody back together again we then have the next big threat which is the ice elves are going to come out of hiding and um and and start fighting against humanity and you're probably sitting here going what the hell are you talking about how did you get to that point from this point well that was part of the world building that we built early on before i drew the map in the first place was we determined determined that in the course of the history of this event of this um world that we have one of the things we needed to happen was several hundred years ago we needed the humans to have had some sort of catastrophe that caused them to be a refugee race and so they needed to come into the realm of the fey in a weak state even though they had technology behind them and they were coming in as refugees now some of the backstory we created here was when that happened the elves which used to be in one group and one faction um some of the elves had looked at what the humans had done to their own territory with with technology and said they're messing with things they don't understand we can't allow them to come into our realm no we don't want to accept the refugees and then you have all these others who are saying we need to accept them and help guide them and everything else and there was a, a civil war within the elves the losing party which was anti-human got shuffled off to this north western section of the map where uh, they went into exile essentially and nobody's heard from them for 500 plus years well that's the ice elves and they become an important part later on because they've been watching the humans grow in power over the past 500 years and then all the stuff that starts to happen with the evolution uh, there's this crazy stuff going on so I, I realize i'm bouncing all over the map here but um the important thing was getting a story in place first through many hours of brainstorming with my brother like I said, those are publicly available. So you can, if you really want to dive into this, you can go watch those. Then we get into the world maps. And while I'm working on the world map, my brother is starting to build the framework of our point-and-click adventure game at the same time. So I'm working on this. He's working on that. Um, I started to look at, well, what are we going to do for art? And Chris, my wife, um, has always liked drawing, but from a hobby standpoint she's never done it professionally it's always just been she likes to sculpt she likes to paint she likes to draw she likes to sketch um she has an artistic side but she's never expressed that in a professional manner and so i went to chris and i said would you want to work on this project and draw art because the other thing is as much as she likes fantasy movies and stuff she's never been into video games or tabletop or anything like that so i would just ask would you want to draw some fantasy art? I started showing her some stuff online and she said, yeah, I mean, I think I could, I, I could be interested in doing that. So um, she started drawing sketches and paintings and then we got her a, uh, a tablet so that she could start learning how to do digital art. And then that's another process that was documented. The whole way we've gone along is Christina's progression from pencil sketches to watercolor painting to then getting into digital production on her Wacom, Wacom, Wacom tablet um, that she uses, um, and and the program that she uses, and progressively becoming better as an artist as she goes along. Um, that's something else that we've documented and streamed and shared on TikTok and everywhere else and our YouTube channels and and through Patreon. Um, and so she said yes, and so I'm starting to work on world maps and. Um, We've already got the story set by this point. I'm working on World Maps. Joy's working on the Point and Click Adventure Game. We have weekly meetings to talk about what did we work on, what are we working on next week, and you know, are there any like stand-ups basically? I mean, are there any things that we need to worry about? Do you have any new ideas for story? What do we think about maybe tweaking this part of the story? And so we just kept progressing week after 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 week until we had nearly 200 patreon posts and hundreds if not thousands of social media posts and videos and everything else documenting our entire journey from step one to get to here so i've talked a little bit about story and i've given you a very high level view of some of the things that my brother and i have brainstormed to get the story into place we've talked about the map um 
I'm giving people a very high level, you know, approach to this because I'm not breaking it down into individual components. If people want me to break it down into individual components and this becomes its own series, I'm happy to do like a world building episode and a story building episode. But right now I'm doing a top down of tabletop world building, right? So you need a story. Once you've got your story, you've got your setting. Once you've got your setting, you can make a map. Once you've got a map, here's where, and I think that somebody else, I think uh, uh, Matt Mercer has, has a brilliant, very quick, he talks about it in this way. He's like, so you always have to have and he does it slightly in reverse from me, but um, his version of was take like a mine, uh, you know, a mine here. There's a mine. Okay, so you know there's going to be a mining settlement nearby. What does a mining settlement need? Well, they're going to need guilds and groups and this, that, and the other, and they're going to need supplies. And they're going to need this, that, and the other. So you start building it out from that, and very quickly you've got a mine, a mining settlement within a county that's within a prov province that's within a kingdom, which might be within another kingdom as part of a greater, you know, this, that, or the other. Um, there are various ways to go about it. My way is we come up with the story first, the maps next. And then once I already know the story, I could take those ideas from the story and start to craft the map based around the points that I have. Now, I am always going to start off with main points. And if you watch the map building episodes where I'm streaming the, the production of the world map, you'll hear me pontificate about different places i'm like and i think i even move a couple of things during the, the creation of this map i'm like actually i don't think it would make sense for this to be here if this is going on over here because my brother and i would have additional meetings during the creation of this world map and eventually you get to the point where you tweak the map a few more times and what's interesting here is i'm not going to zoom in on it um and you probably can't see the mouse but if you look in the center of the map just to the southwest um which is that's not the right direction. The right direction would be that way. Southwest of the the big inner sea, you'll see a lake um, that's located down there. Um, it's like straight across from where it says Twitter and Instagram down there. Um, there's a lake there, and there's only one black dot, dot a big black dot on the north side, towards the northwestern side of that lake to represent a city. When I was creating the chapters of the book, that coincide with the events that are taking place in the tabletop campaign, they end up on the main characters of the book end up on that lake in that northern city and have to um, travel south across that lake in a boat and get to the other side. And they end up in another place on the southern side that's described in the book, but it's not yet on the map because I never went and updated the world map with that location. And there will be more places that I add to the book as it continues to go through revision stages until I get to the publishable version of the first novel. Once that's done, I will then take any locations that were added as a result of the writing of that first book and I will add them to this map. And if there's anything that I end up adding to the source book or from the campaign, as we live stream that first section of the story for the tabletop component, those get added in as, le as well. So this map will get updated probably around summertime of 2023. I would estimate I would I will update this map. I think right now there's about seven or eight locations that have been added through the writing process that were not on this map when I finished it back in like mid 2021 when I wrapped up this world map. Now, once I had the principal locations on the world map, it was then expanding into the forests and the um, different areas, the different geographical regions of the map. Now, this is where I had to learn a new tool set. I had to go learn how to use Incarnate. I had never used Incarnate before I did this world map. So I learned by doing. I literally went out did my research, looked at several different map making programs. I'd used a couple of them in the past on other projects, ended up liking Incarnate more than the other ones. And the pro version was like, I don't know, 25 bucks for the whole year or something. So I went, that's fine. That's cheap. I'll buy it. Got it. I get, you know, get all the assets. I can do battle maps. I can do, you know, dungeon maps. I can do all these crazy things with it. Um, but I didn't know how to use it. So I had to learn. And so that was another documentable process where, and I promise there's a reason I keep talking about documenting your progress. We're, we're going to be talking about that as we get deeper into this video. Um, but documenting that whole process uh, and learning incarnate live on stream with people and eventually just working my way through until um, we had the world map completed. And then once I had the world map, um, 
I literally just made up a bunch of sh names for everything because I had a couple of story points. Remember that storyline that my brother and I cooked up? There was no names for any of the places. Also, no names for any of the, you know, we just were calling them by generic names for the races like elves and dwarves and brownies and, and halflings, you know, but then we got to come up with, you know, what are the, are there tribes? Like, what are the tribe names and, and all these different things? Um, those are things that come later. So generically, we have a setting with a storyline and some, some fantastical races, um, put it all down on a map. Now we've got the geographical, you know, the geography laid out, but we don't have names for anything. So then it's just a matter of coming up with names. Some of the names can also be placeholder names. This is one of the cool things about creating something over a two to three year process is like, even though you're doing it in the public eye and documenting it, things will change between this and, you know, at some point down the road. So for example, we just call one place like the Greenwood because that's what the humans call it is the Greenwood. But through text, through reading in the tabletop, about the history of the elves and the wood elves in particular. And then in the the book series itself, you start to find out, oh, well, this is the name that the wood elves have from the self for themselves, and these are what the high elves call themselves, and these are what the sea elves call themselves, and, and the this is the name for this dwarf group over here, and this is the name of this dwarf tribe over here, and these humans are called this, and these humans are called that. That stuff is different and can be detailed in, in when you're getting into the actual tabletop component. So story, world map, a bunch of fake names for these locations. And now I've gotten the fake names for all the locations. I can start breaking those down and going, I, knew, I know that these cities are major areas. Then I go, where does the story start? Well, the story starts because of this plague. Well, we know we need the plague to start in the major capital city. So I picked the capital city of Parthana. I put it on the map. And now I have a starting place for the story. So Parthana, if you look at the star that is that inner sea, I'm not zooming into the map right now because it's just the way it is on this screen. Um, that southern tip around the inner sea and the island in the middle, uh, it's Parthana. And, and I don't, you can't see my mouse icon. It doesn't really matter. Anyway, that's the place. Well, that's one tiny dot on this massive map that we've created. So the beautiful part about this is that I have now created this huge geographical region with boundaries that lead to other places that can be used for future expansions. But then I've set the story in this tiny little dot. And I know for a fact that the story arc of book one and book two, potentially book three, depending on a few things, um, my brother and I can look at this and say, okay, well, we know we're going we're gonna to have this story take place in the basically about one third of this space within this map is going to make up this first season story arc, about one third of this. Um, we're not going to use the other two thirds, but it's there so that if we need to refer to it for any other storyline purposes, we can. And if we ever need to journey to those other two third places outside of this first trilogy of books, we can. And then beyond that, we get into the places that we can't go to during this season because of the borders on the map. So north, south, west. Uh, I don't think there's anything to the east. I forget if I no, I don't have anything listed to the east. Um for reasons. Anyway, now that we know that we're starting our story within here, my brother and I have already laid out the the story beats, the main beats of what needs to happen. We need there to be a plague. We know there's a background with the history of the humans that takes five took place 500 years ago. We know that these major events happened around these time periods. Then I go down, and this is something I do by myself in a vacuum, um, but then I talk about it with my brother in the weekly updates, which you'll see if you want to watch through all those. Um, I then update him on my progress and going, okay, so... I created this storyline for the humans. What do you think about that? And then we tweak things along the way. Okay, and I came up with this for the elves. What do you think about that? And he's okay, and so we tweak that. And then I came up with my story for this. What do you think about that? And then I tweak that. And once we got to the point where we had the major story beats taken down to their granular, granular level, I am then able to say, okay, here's the outline for the first novel and the story beats for the second novel with room to expand into a third novel if it is needed. But we have the story beats and an, at least an outline for the first novel of like 50 chapters. Then we stepped away from that and said, now let's iron out 
the story beats for the point and click adventure game and narrow those down into chapter format, if you will. So we did that. Then we're able to compare those two and align them so that instead of being aligned like this, they align like this so that they fit together in the timeline so that the point and click adventure game is taking place at the same time as the events of the novel. Then I started writing chapter work, uh, draft ideas in my head, while also starting to create the Escape from Parthana module. So Chris and I would go to the park, I would take my notebook, and I would just jot down ideas for the storyline of what needed to progress in the city to get it to the point where that we had this plague event that happened that exploded into this um, chaos of, of what it became and then the quarantine and everything else. And I literally just looked at real world scenarios. I said, what, what, what happened in these major cities when COVID became this thing that everybody started panicking over? And I looked at what it was like in the real world. And then I went to my brother and I said, what do you think it would be like? Here's what I think. What would it, I think it would look like this in a medieval environment, even if they have magic, but because magic isn't going to be that effective because of these reasons we've established, because we need it to be a plague that can't be fixed with magic. Um, well, how are they going to deal with it? You know, And what's that going to look like? So then once we knew that, I was able to then sort of, you know, come away from that and, and write the events up to that explosion of, of anger and everything else that, that, and, and, and all the other things that happen along with this event, um, this conversion. So then I was able to take that and say, okay, now I've got the story beats for the first campaign for this adventure, which is going to be the prequel campaign. Now I need to align that on top of the point and click adventure game and that first novel and now that I've got all three of these components working together, okay, now I can kind of take a step back and start to work on all of these projects simultaneously. So the way it worked throughout the bulk of 2021 and all of 2022 was uh, my brother mostly focusing on the point and click um, adventure game. And because he's doing all of the programming and all of the heavy lifting there, I'm just doing the writing, which means. Um, I do all the description texts for everything. I do all the the um, dialogue for NPCs. I do all of the quests, dialogue for missions, everything. If there's a description, if there's a tooltip, if there's a signpost, um, a line of dialogue, I do all of that. And then he does all of the implementation of taking that and put it into Unreal with the the um, um, I'm blanking the blueprint system and and gets the point and click working um by the way anybody who might be interested you could go play a demo of that over on our patreon page um we are pretty close to wrapping that up so it's going to be out this year at some point um so working on that while also because that was the infrequent work because he works at a different speed than i do and he's that's a different beast because he's got to build the assets place the assets test everything got to get everything working it takes him a lot longer than it takes me to just write something so i can get that written and then i go away and i say um i did a two times a month pace for chapter writing of the book so two times a month i'm coming out with a chapter and those are about two thousand words long and those come out on patreon so what i would do was i would either write the adventure first it would just some it was different every week but essentially I would write a chapter of the book and then at the same time write what had happened in that chapter in the module for that prequel module or vice versa. Sometimes I would have an idea um, that would be from that. And then I kind of came up with the core ideas and everything. And then around, I think it was August, around August of 2021, we had some of our friends and patrons who did a play test live public i believe that was also here on my youtube channel under the project dream and it was six episodes and all we did was we did a very brief play test of our rule set and that first initial module in its rare bare bones format over a six episode stream session um it was like six weeks and um i then was able to take my notes that I had taken to use as a guide to DM the campaign. And then I took notes of what the players did during those play sessions. I then went away and I fleshed out the module 
with optional content that was based on the decisions that the players had made during those playtest sessions. I also took those characters from the playtest sessions and I put them into the module as quest givers whose NPCs had quests based on the backgrounds that those playtesters gave me for their characters when they did the playtest. So I was able to take my notes and flesh it out with things that happened during live streams to create ultimately what became the first draft of that level one to level four module, which is called Escape from Parthana. All of that was being done simultaneously uh, to the uh, part one of book one taking place and being written, which part one is the first 10 chapters, essentially, which takes place in the city of Parthana leading up to the big event that causes this conversion of the quarant of the of the plague turned and everything else and then causes the quarantine to take place. And then we take a six month break in storyline and we pick up with the point and click adventure game. That's where the point and click adventure game starts is six months after this event. That's also where season one of the tabletop campaign takes place. And it's also when um, you have part two of book one picks up there as well and so everything starts there and we go through the next story arc of the book which coincides with the story arc number one from season one of the tabletop campaign and then story arc two is following part the next part of the book and vice versa so it all ties in together and then the point and click adventure game is taking place in a smaller window of time um, which is that six month period right after all this happens. And then because it's a much smaller storyline, um, that's something that kind of exists in its own bubble within what's happening within the tabletop and uh, campaign and book series. So that is essentially um, what we have done is we've created a multi-part world where there are all of these different things going on that, all tie back into each other. And it's not, I'm, I'd like to say, out, you know, putting, putting this out there, we've been fully documenting this process since March of 2021 on our Patreon page. So um, you can go read the book chapters, you can watch documentaries, you can pre-order the point-and-click adventure game, try the point-and-click demo, you can get all of the map packs that I made in 8K resolution to use for your own VTT campaigns because I've got an agnostic agnostic map pack that has none of our POIs associated with it. So it's just a map of like dungeons and city streets and so on and so forth that people can use. Like all that stuff is stuff we've been putting up and making available on our Patreon page over the last couple of years. And we launched the first version of the tabletop uh, source book in that module in May of 2022. And we ran that all the way up until the OGL chaos happened. And then I, at the beginning of this year, the first thing I had to do before anything else was I had to very quickly, based on what I saw, the leaked, that leaked 1.1 stuff, I immediately stripped the OGL out of our guidebook because we were making a fifth edition supplement at that point. Um, even though it was RIP and everything else, we were making it fifth edition compatible. I was then um, required to strip out the OGL as part of our um, book. And rather than have it be based on D20, I made it into an agnostic um, book, uh, which is rules free. It doesn't have any sort of rules that it, it goes on. It's just a setting that people can use for whatever rule set they want. And now we're looking at what the ORC Alliance is doing, and I don't know if we'll use that, but long term, we're looking at it. I'm a part of that conversation. I'm in the Discord channel, everything else. Um, so um, the source book as it sits now um, is out there, and it's in what I would consider a a very decent early access point. Um, you could consider it as is because it's published with a full campaign, an intro campaign, a level one to four, and the, all the tools you need to do the setting. But because the first novel hasn't been finished yet, there are things that probably will get tweaked in terms of the story as we do the rewrites and edits of book one. I'll probably then go back and go, well, I want to tweak these five little things. The best part about us producing everything digitally is that I can do that on the fly and then I can immediately get those updates out to our customers because it's literally just a download. It's literally just, hey guys, there's an update. New version of the book is out. Go get it. You're a customer. You've already paid for it. It's yours. Like It's not like a tabletop book where you then have 
go out and buy version two, which costs you another 50 bucks. It's just like, no, it's the same version. It's just had some more information added to it. And we'll be able to continue to do that over time until such time as we get to the point where we feel we need to do a second version, which won't be for a while because we've got at least, if I had to estimate the pace that we took to build the first part of what we've got going on, which is basically two years, because March will be two years exactly. And March is when we're estimated to have the book completely done. Um, the tabletop portion is already done, but we'll get all that stuff working together. We're pr pretty close to being done with the point and click game. Um, so March is the, the, the waypoint that we're all looking at towards having everything sort of come together and be ready. Um, and then we'll get into the polish process, which will last, you know, a few months throughout 2023. But then we'll get into the next stage, which is then book two, the second story arc, which brings into play the ice elves, which are up there. I would estimate that that alone is going to take another two years for us to develop that and and fully get that fleshed out. Because looking at the pace that we, we did um, the first part, now it might take. It might be quicker than that, but that depends on so many factors that are out of our control. We we do this in our spare time, um, and it's not something. It's not our full time gig. YouTube is my full time gig, and my brother has a ranch. Um, and Chris and I are you know building up our homestead channel as well. But this is still very much a. Um, it's a business, and it pays for itself, and it pays for our contractors, and it pays for. All the business, it pays for itself. We do not make any money off of it. Um, we're still very much doing it as a, you know, it's a business that's being built into existence. And whenever we feel like it's something we want to market, we will. Um, but in the meantime, I wanted to give everybody a little bit of insight in what um, has gone into building our world in terms of tabletop world building. This is what we did. This is the process for us. Um, how long it's taken and everything else. Um, I'm not going to get into, you know, finances and stuff like this, but it, you know, if we had to put man hours into it, yeah, this would be, a, you know, even if, if you look at three people working part-time hours, you know, over the course of, of two years, you're still looking at, you know, tens of thousands of dollars of production value. Um, but since we don't consider that, this has just been something we do in our spare time. Um, just getting it to the point where we feel it's ready to market. And that'll be when we um, get the tape. When, once the point and click, excuse me, once the point and click is done, that's our end of phase one. And once we're at the end of phase one, we'll be able to, to start marketing. In the meantime, we just document. And along the way, we've gotten people. I mean, at one point, I think we had like 27 patrons. I think now we're at like 17 or something. It just, it fluctuates. You know, it's easy to look at DM Dave and say, well, that guy's got 7,500, but he's also been doing it for a long time. And they do something that's completely different than what we're doing because they produce, you know, different types of adventures supplements whereas we're focused on one ip and and it's a smaller team and we're not doing what he's doing so that's a little bit different um but i mean it's growing every day which is great and um i'm pretty stoked where we are with things um, we've had some 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 good feedback from people we've had plenty of sales it's a functioning thing so that's pretty awesome um, it will continue to grow this is not our first rodeo so it's like um, I think the like the MMRPG project is a good example we went four years before we ever got on stage in front of anybody and that's when I presented the game at the Austin Game Conference in 2017 in front of you know, I don't know how many people were there but with we were there for um, as part of um Microsoft's uh, indie game dev showcase, I believe it was, or Intel, Intel's indie game dev showcase. We were one of the top 10 on stage, you know, and that was our first conversation with publishers and investors, you know, but that was a four year journey to even get to the point where we were ready for that kind of exposure. And looking at where we're at with this project, we're two, we're almost two years in. I um, mean, I'd say we're, we're within the net, we're within three to six months of wanting to be ready for that kind of exposure. Um, we've started to talk about having conversations with publishers, um, not for the tabletop side of things, but for the point and click side of things, because we know what we can do on our own and, and in terms of how many sales we can get and everything else. But there's in the back of our minds, we're looking at, you know, well, can we find a publisher that wants to work with the unique thing that we're building? Because obviously when a lot of people go and build a point and click game, that's all they have is a point and click game. Whereas we have a point and click game, a tabletop 
game, a book series. It's all these things that are part of the same thing. And so it's the same conversation if we decide to go out and look for a tabletop publisher to publish the print side of our operation. Um, what does that look like? Because we know what we can make on our own. So at this point, the only incentive we have to work with someone is are they going to be able to give us or get us more money than we can get on our own? That's, that's literally, literally just an economic question at this point in terms of Who's going to be able to get us the most cheddar, you know? So these are conversations that we have these days as, as my brother wraps up the point and click and as I'm getting close to the end of, of the first novel. Um, and now also with the OGL being out there, you know, I've, I've made a rough pass on our um, book, but it needs another pass now because I need to now go in and, and not just strip all the OGL components out, but I have to decide, am I making it truly rules agnostic? Because the quick fixes I made to it made it, rules agnostic but still with examples of d20 stuff in there which can apply to many different systems um but then it's like do i make it do i even include any rules in it at all or do i edit those out completely what's going to happen with the orc alliance are we going to put our book in the orc um i don't know yet like there's all these questions i have about what are we doing with the future long-term part of our project but right now it still sits as it is which is a standalone um, setting that people can plug into whatever a tabletop BTT they want or rule set. So it it works even as it is, but we will continue to flesh it out as we get deeper into this and, and we'll see where it goes. So that's my take on tabletop world building. Hopefully I'll be able to um, provide more information for people as they want it, if they have interest. I, like I said at the beginning of this video and throughout, the best information about all of this is over at, our, over, over at our Patreon page because we literally have documented this whole thing since the beginning. So there's couple hundred posts, um, videos at the Wazoo if you want to watch my brother and I doing our early brainstorming sessions and talking about timelines that we then ignore or throw away or redo, um, getting my wife involved. My wife used to participate in most of the live streams until we moved because once we got here, we had the rescue cats and then Chris became like the de facto mom of the house and she just started taking care of everything around the homestead and all the shopping and cooking and cleaning and the cats and everything else while I focused on growing my personal channel here because I make the bulk of our income at this point um, through this channel. So um, again, it's not the only way to do things. Other people have done things differently. This is our journey. Hopefully it's something useful to those of you out there who have an interest in building your own tabletop world, but more importantly, how to take it to a profitable state and get it to the point where you can have a commercial product. I know some people will look at us and go like, well, you're not technically all the way there, so you don't have room to speak. You're welcome to that opinion, but um, we've done enough things over the years that have proved uh, ourselves to the public that I don't need to worry about that so much. So it's mostly just at this point going, okay, it's out there if you want it. If not, great. You know, We'll market it when we need to and we'll continue to build just like we always have. And you know, the next stage of our journey is publicly documented you know we've talked about we'd like to work on an i think the next project is is going to be an rpg as opposed to just a point and click game we've got a couple of programmers who want to work with us um so it would just be a matter of then figuring out are we getting the funding from patreon are we doing the funding through investors do we self-fund like what do we do for the next stage of it because this time around we didn't need anybody it was just my brother and i and chris so it was just three of us tooled along uh we did some contracting with some people to get some additional artwork but we didn't need anybody else to work on this project for us. Uh, whereas the next steps of things do require a couple of other bodies. So who knows where it goes from there? In any case, that's our journey. That's where we are, how we've gotten to where we are today. Hopefully that provides you some information on tabletop world building. And if you liked what you saw here today, please consider subscribing. Like, subscribe, hit that bell icon, and more importantly, support if you can. Obviously, there's the Patreon page, which is a joint venture between the three of us, but you can also support me directly here along with Chris by just dropping a membership down below, doing a super chat or a super sticker or a super thanks after the fact. All are great ways to support. There is a Discord as well. Links are all down there for those of you who want to go the extra mile. In the meantime, yeah, this was a long video, um, but hopefully it provides everybody with the information that they want. And... I mean, like I said, it's been our unique journey into building a tabletop world, um, and it might not be everybody's way of doing things. There might be better ways of doing it. This is just how we did it. So happy gaming, everybody. Until next time, stay safe. Happy to answer all your questions down there in the comments below. See you next time.